Hello and welcome to the next day of our daily blog. So the chapter that I'm going to be talking about today is titled Behind the Mask and I'd just like to start by sharing with you the quote at the beginning of this chapter which I think kind of sums up a lot of what I've read so far. So we talk a lot about the face that we present to the world, about saving face or about losing face, about putting a brave face on things. And so much of this kind of language suggests that our face is something we can work on and polish until it shows only what we want it to show. So when reading this chapter, it's brought to mind how in current climates, we are forced to wear a mask. We're having to wear a physical mask all of the time. And it's opened my eyes really to how much we can hide ourselves with both a physical mask, but also with an emotional mask. And we can become a blank slate this way to other people around us. I've realised that so much of what we say actually has nothing to do with the words that come out of our mouth. And it has so much more to do with those subtle cues that our body gives away, those things that we don't say. And I think I've realised that I'm someone who is often very guilty of wearing the brave face mask that the book talks about. Um, some of you know, some of you won't know, but um, myself and my husband, we lost a daughter three years ago. And I'm someone who's very, very guilty of when asked, oh, how are you? My first response instantly is to say, I'm fine, thank you. And to move that conversation on. And I think that is very much where I do wear that mask. I put that mask on and it's made me sort of stop and think, why do I do that? Why do I put that mask on instantly and say, oh, I'm fine, when often I'm far from it at the time of being asked? And I think... It's partly to do with protecting myself and it's partly that that mask is worn for my benefit to stop myself from having to have uncomfortable conversations or having to address how I'm really feeling and put that out there. But it's also a feeling of needing to protect other people, a feeling of them not being able to or ready to hear what I have to say and needing to shield them and keep them safe from having to hear how you're really feeling and having to have that kind of impact their day. And I think... We rarely allow our true feelings and our true words to be heard and we never really let people get behind that mask, we never really let that guard down unless it's someone who we truly, truly trust. And those people are people who can see beyond that anyway, they see straight away beyond that emotional mask. They don't need to hear the words you say to know what's behind, what's going on behind that and they see past that mask instantly. And I think that's where God does this with such ease. There's just no point wearing a mask. There's no point putting a face onto yourself when you talk to him. There's just no need. He already sees behind that. And I just think there's no judgment from him. There's no need to fear what he's going to think of you if you let that mask go, if you don't present that best image of yourself or the image that you think he wants to see because he's already been on that journey with you. He's already walked that path with you. He's already seen how you feel and what you've gone through. He's already pulled you out the other side of those events in your life. So he already knows when you're not fine. He already knows when you're faking it. And I think that's probably one of the few times when you can ever truly just let that mask down because it's somebody who sees beyond it anyway. And this kind of led me then to reflect on how in my job as a teacher, so much of what I do relies on the things I don't actually say, um, which sounds a bit funny to say as a teacher really, but. Because I work with very young children, they are so good at seeing beyond what you say. They're so good at relying on what your face is doing and what your actions are doing for them to help them to understand the world around them and to help them to feel safe, really. I find that they instantly know if I don't feel right. They instantly know if I'm worried about something or if, you know, today is going to be an unusual day. They can read that already. They can read that in how you behave. And I think... It's why teaching in a physical mask at the moment has been almost impossible because they need to see your face. They need to see behind that mask, behind that physical mask, and they need to see behind that emotional mask. They need to see the real you to be able to feel secure. Um, and then I think that teaching in an emotional mask in that way is just pointless. They're just far better at seeing beyond that than adults are. They ignore this front that we put up. We can go in there with the biggest smile on your face and present this version of yourself that you want them to see, but they see straight through it. There's no point in that front. And I think that's where they can come across as brutally honest um, and blunt at times because they haven't learned to mask themselves. They haven't learned a need to hide who they really are and a need to present this front. They just 
are themselves. They, they have that innocence to be able to just be who they are with no mask needed. And I think they just voice what we as adults are afraid to say and afraid to share with the world because we're scared of judgment. We fear that so much that we have to have this mask. And I think that's where we can really learn from children that they don't present this mask. There is no need. They present this raw, innocent version of themselves at all times. And they call us on it. When we're wearing this mask, they call us on it. They see past it in exactly the same way that God does. And in this way, it's kind of led me to think then about how the same is true with your relationship with God. There's just no need for a mask. He's already seen behind it. He's like that innocent child. He will see beyond what we choose to share and see what we don't choose to share. So we're able to then drop that front and be our true raw selves and trust that that will be enough for him, that who we are is enough for him. So thank you for listening and I hope that in some small way this encourages you to take off your emotional mask every now and again, whether it's in your spiritual life and also in your wider life.